Okay, everybody, greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our masterclass, the five things you need to be immune to the negative energies that apparently are sweeping the earth right now. And most importantly, how to use this as the initiation you as a person of spirit came for. I am Marguerite Regal Yozo, and I am welcoming here Don Del Vecchio, who you've already just heard from. Hello, welcome. Good to see you all here. And I'm super excited about this incredibly international gathering. I've asked them to share where they are calling in from, and it's quite extraordinary. So I feel already this containment around the earth in which we're bringing our light together. It is so exciting. So we plan on running about 45 minutes to an hour. If we get inspired, we're just going to keep going until we're finished, but we don't want to um, run too much over that. But just letting you know, it will be a little bit flexible. Um, so, okay. Thank you for coming. We know that um, a lot of you are here live with us. Some of you know Dawn and me. Some of you are going to be new to us. And basically, we just want everybody to take a deep breath here. So if you want, you can close your eyes. And just take some breaths. Feel your body against the earth. Feel Mother Earth embracing you. And just feel that we are all encircled in protective and elevating golden light. We're calling on the energies of Mother Earth, Mother Divine, Father Divine. And all of our highest level guides and helpful ancestors, we're honoring that it's Navaratri right now, honoring Divine Mother as she is known as Durga. And we are in a very potent window astrologically. So taking a deep breath in, coming to present time and opening your eyes. Okay, we invite you to stay on for all of these empowerments and stay on until the end because we're going to have a vital resource that we'll let you know about as well as a bonus. And we want to first thank our sacred space holder, Dove Oracle Priestess, Wendy Manning, who's helping to keep our container grounded, focused, clear, and protected today. You've heard, some of you have heard from her. Thank you so much, Wendy. All right. So, yeah, hi. Make your presence known. <laughs> Hello. Right. You're welcome, Marguerite. It's an honor to be here today with you and Dawn. Thank you. All right. Blessed be. Okay. So let's just give a little context before we start going into these empowerments, these things that you need to know in order to not be swept away by these negative forces and not to be so affected by them. Um, you know, Dawn and I love our communities and all of you who have been interested in spiritual work, and we love working together. And so we wanted to offer you some helpful service in gratitude for the honoring that you provide us through your support of our work. All right, so launching in here, I am probably not telling you anything new when I say that things have been feeling a little extra lately. And by extra, I pretty much mean the last 12 years since 2012. But by lately, I also mean lately like the past three years and lately like the past month and then, you know, the past day. Okay, we're all feeling in one way or another what Dawn and I are essentially calling negativity. Okay, and if you're having a great time right now and you're sailing above the fray fabulous and we'll have what you're having okay tell us what you're having um but you know even if you're living off the grid out in the center of the himalayas and uh, we do have some people who've written in from the himalayas we're happy to have you zooming in from the mountains you know, even if you're if you're on the outskirts or out of it all, most likely, if not you, someone close to you is going through what we're calling the meat grinder. Okay, so there's 
there's an extra negativity that seems to be upon us a little bit more intense than it ever has been. I describe this as visiting energies. I tend to see them as external visitor forces. This is what my oracle tells me. This might be the reality that you embrace as well. Buddhists might say they are just the creation of our own mind. Whatever the case may be, we've got a lot of negativity formations floating around out there. Would you agree? And so what I've received in Oracle is this is the key point. These energies hook into our human wounds. This is what's important to know. This is the foundation of everything we're going to be talking about today and upcoming. They hook into wounds that have been created and exacerbated through all sorts of traumas in our life and in perhaps many lives. And these visiting energies ratchet up our wounds. And this fosters within us a whole host of negative feeling emotions. And because of this pressure from visiting forces, and now there is a light component to this, which we'll talk about later, but through the actions, the negative actions of these visitors, we are escalating into division, arguments, infighting, and more. On the personal level, we can all see what this has been feeling like over the last three years, especially. And on the collective level, we're seeing escalations of conflicts, warfare, where sometimes we don't even know who is the real perpetrator of acts, because there is only one perpetrator. Okay, these visiting forces. And in my worldview, these visitors foment all of this because they feed on the neg negativity. They feed on the negative emotions. They also and then I'm they put a little golden light around yourself. They also feed on bloodshed. Okay, and we don't want to be naive about that. We're living in a world where a lot of strife and fear are being stimulated as exemplified by all these pictures of doom and gloom, financial and environmental disaster, and more. You can barely wake up these days and tune into anything without feeling what the Italians call agita. All right? Yeah, no. Just feeling focaccht. All right, so Dawn, I'm going to throw this over to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, my guess is certainly from those in my community, this won't be news to you. And um, I feel like Marguerite has a very gentle way of sharing that, you know, the visitors, I will often call them parasites, uh, whatever the energy is at the highest level, at the very highest level, there's no need for us to be in fear for we are the divine children of the one. Now, unfortunately, most people have no understanding whatsoever of what's going on. So they're being overtaken by their own personal and collective shadow material, what I call shadow material. So this can be anything from fears, patterning from childhood, addictions, rage, violence, undiagnosed or misdiagnosed emotional issues. Meanwhile, those of us who've been working our spiritual tools and working to serve this great awakening, this great ascension, incension process we're on a journey of here on earth are starting to get exhausted. For us, the pressure of this um, to deal with these shadow visitors while simultaneously being able to receive and integrate the new light energies can look like things like emotional flare-ups, a sense of exhaustion and defeatism, like oh, enough or, you know, like I, I've had enough of this. I'm just, I'm throwing in the towel, that kind of energy, old fears arising, a lack of clarity or crispness of the mind, almost like so there's times where it can almost feel like we're, we're working really hard to be in service, to be in the light, to hold that light energy, but like we're trying to cut vegetables with a dull knife, working really hard, and nothing's really happening despite our efforts. So that's an experience we're having. It doesn't have to stay our reality, but I just want, we're, we're setting the stage here. We're, we're creating the context. This may be some of how you've been feeling. And if this does resonate in any way, please feel free to share in the chat box. Okay, Marguerite, over to you. All righty. 
Okay, so we're in the soup of negativity. We're trying to cope with this, but guess what? This is part of our spiritual initiation. All of this is supporting it, okay? This condition does offer the opportunity of greater healing than ever before and spiritual awakening to new levels of reality and psychic seeing, okay? So we have to remember that this time offers as much of an influx of light as it does this negative shadow. This is by law of duality in which we live. Where there is increasing negativity, there is the equal and opposite increasing light. So again, this is an opportunity, Dawn. Yeah, so I'm gonna just tease this out a little bit more. So the negativity is because of the light of higher frequencies in that sense, the ascension energies. Um, you think about it this way. If you're in a dark room or under the bed, there's dust bunnies. I like to use the dust bunny term or cockroaches, you could say, and you turn on the light, you see what has been hidden before. When you look under the bed and you put the flashlight, you're like, oh my God, all those dust bunnies. So this is what's happening. We are being bombarded right now on the planet through the photon belt, through greater alignment with galactic center, through Gaia's intention to ascend herself, her, her, um, Schumann resonance, her, her heartbeat, her frequency are all increasing, which means that the negativity, both the visitors and the shadow material within ourselves is all being exposed um, and within the individual as well as the collective. So the those who don't want to be seen because they've benefited off of us being basically unconscious and you know working our butts off for, for um, the benefit of a few, they don't want us to wake up. Of course they don't. They benefit from it, from us being in the dark, so to speak. So the light of this ascension energy is stirring up all that is not in accord with love, with love. In order that we clear the fear, clear the unconscious patterning, clear whatever's blocking us from taking in the light and expanding our consciousness from, from to new levels. So it's important that we know that these light frequencies bombarding earth, they're going to continue. They're not slowing down. There's actually an acceleration and they're likely to accelerate even more in 2024. Now, this is both from guidance I'm receiving and from the astrology as well. So as that acceleration happens, the efforts by the negative forces, the visitors, the parasites who are desperate to keep a lid on humanity's waking are also going to accelerate, which means we need to up our game. And that's not by simply coping the best we can with our current spiritual tools. This is a big initiation. It's a big opportunity. And so what we need is to give ourselves the time and the support to receive, which can feel exactly counterintuitive given the increasing material pressures we're all feeling and the energetics that are pressuring our consciousness to expand. So just in a nutshell, it means consciously shifting our energies in order to receive and integrate the new energies and upgrades available to us now. All right. So how are we going to do that? Well, this is the point of this masterclass today. We're offering a number of empowerments, five to be exact. And number one is recognize your own typical response to negativity and pause. So what does that mean? This starts with hunkering down with the good old fashioned discipline of applying your awareness, getting quiet, identifying the emotion and the bodily component that goes along with it, tightness, holding breath, brain fog, suddenly not being in your feet or even in your body. Now, for those of us who have experienced trauma, which is 99.9999% of us, okay, where we suddenly get out of our bodies and we don't even know what's going on with us emotionally because in the past, the adults shut us down. 
this can be a pretty big commitment to self, this awareness, this recognizing our typical habits of facing negativity. But it is the critical number one step. And you can do this with some commitment to yourself about it. Meditation is a great step in this regard. Where you want to go are these simple things we've always been taught. First, breathing, centering to calm your body. Now, in medicine ceremony, uh, almost two weeks ago with the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy, uh, we received that there's a trajectory for coming out of freak out, which is going to breath, going to stillness, which leads to relaxation, which needs leads to peace, which, oh, by the way, opens the door to you being the love that you are, being more kindly loving to yourself and others, okay? Breath, stillness, relaxation, peace, love. Now, my personal work lately, I'm in a woman's group and we have to have a project. So I've chosen relaxing and bringing breath and flow to when I'm working. <laughs> That's my project. Instead of the typical pushing, 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 because guess what? My womb started talking to me and you'll have this experience. If you're out of alignment, if you're doing old patterns that don't work, your body, mind, spirit is going to talk to you. And it was talking to me. I was starting to get tweaks. Oh no, what's going on? So I've started doing this among some other tools. And I realized that I needed to develop a love affair with the out breath. It wasn't even so much the in breath as the out breath. That was what was helping me to relax. Dawn. Mm, thank you. So, um, you know, Marguerite and I live pretty far apart. And so we, we it's not like we talk every day, but uh, we are receiving some, you know, similar guidance through our own different uh, or oracular ways. So for me, the guides have been very clear lately, clearly coming through, encouraging me personally and us to slow down, to recalibrate and to receive right now to receive these new light energies and consciousness upgrades that are here available to us. So to ride this ascension wave, it's really up to each of us to choose to go against the limiting condition, limitation conditioning. So things like efforting more, contracting more, or mentally and emotionally checking out. So I want to say those again, because our conditioning programs are you know, if it, if there's struggle, work harder, right? Work harder. Or, um, you know, uh, if, if you're in fear, you know, contract more, like put your energy out less, you know, just hold things within or check out, you know, check out space out. And while to some degree effort needs to be put in and to some degree we need to conserve our energy um, and to some degree, sometimes we do need to check out. And I believe that uh, Gloria and Sylvia, our resident fairies, have a, an extra bonus for us later about that. The truth is that when we lean into our self-care, so consciously bringing that presence to self-care and self-trust and connection with others who are here to lead in the light as well, that's where we actually get that more of a relaxed presence. So there's the breath. Yes, there's the presence. And it's, it's, it's a space of opening and slowing. So it begins with this presence. So I want to just um, complete this little segment. I'm going to share with the uh, analogy of the cross, the cross of matter. You have your vertical axis and your horizontal axis. And so you can think of the horizontal axis as our world here. We can look out at the world our responsibilities at planet crazy sometimes, all the stuff that's going on, the distress, the heartbreak of war and conflict, the, the stuff that's going on there or what our responsibilities are, et cetera. This invitation is for us to go vertical, to root into Mother Earth and to root into Divine Mother, connect into the present moment awareness and open to receive. That is our eternal home right there. That is how we connect in with, with what needs to 
what we need to do next, how we need to show up, what we're being guided to. And so the horizontal plane will tell you things like you can't do that. You don't have time, not enough money. What about this? Oh my God, that all of this stuff. So we can just, what is the vertical here? Let me breathe into that energetic and be present for my guides, my higher self, divine mother, father, God, to show me, guide me. How do I show up in this present now moment? Mm. Okay. Agree. Oh, well, I guess. Yeah. And I would say that means sometimes overriding the pattern and the addiction of freaking out, you know, and really just doing it, you know, just doing these things that you know are there, they must be done now. Okay, Don. Okay, so now we're going to shift. So just if everybody take a breath into your vertical axis, as we move into empowerment number two, for being immune to negative energies that are sweeping the earth and this is to use mainstream media sparingly or not at all. Marguerite? Okay. I've got to be real with you. And if you're here, you probably hold this view already. But in my reality, the mainstream media is the prime means of the visiting controller forces sending out various things, some of which we're aware of and are not. Thought memes thought bombs, programming AI and other technologies to hook into our personal and collective wounds that I talked about earlier. And what this does is it plays us like instruments. And it even creates addiction to the media itself in the form of messages like, you must be informed, you must watch, you must listen, you must read, you can't keep your head in the sand. Well, the information I'm receiving, Dawn is receiving, other great world oracles, it's informing us about the manipulations of the media, as is probably your own intuition. And this is something I've continued to receive for the last 25 years, and the message is consistent. A certain kind of painful reality is being programmed into us through the media. Dawn? Yeah. Yeah. So you can choose if you want to look at what's the basics of what's happening, but then get off of it as quickly and to use and use great discernment with anything that you see. And that includes on social media. Now, my rule of thumb is if it's coming from mainstream media, whatever they're telling me is the thing. Turn 180 degrees, that's probably the truth over there. Now, I realize I can be kind of radical and extreme in that way, but I sincerely, after watching what's unfolded, particularly in the last three years, but like Marguerite, I've been off of this stuff for decades now. Um, it's There is a narrative, and the effort is to keep us in, let's go back to frequency, low frequency, fear, separation, divisiveness, hate, judgment, attack. And, and the messaging is about polarize, polarize, pick a side, whether it's a, whether it's a famous movie star couple slinging poop at each other in a, in a public display, war scenes, disease, whatever it is, everything in the mainstream is to divide us because when we do, are divided, we can be controlled easily. So it's extremely important to use a higher octave of discernment now to pop above the battlefield of that consciousness that all of us were born into and remember the vertical axis. I am a divine child of the creator. I am not here to play in the muck of hate and separation, but to remember and to access, receive and open and extend the light of love. That's right. Yeah, because we now even have media scrambling where people no longer know what's true and false. Media images and footage can be selected and applied to other events. There's AI creation of, of weirdness. And let's be real, even the alternative truth or information can become infiltrated with negative reality pictures 
that are designed to create the very negative timelines we're afraid of because these visitors will stop at nothing. They use all the resources available. They're like, oh, truthers are starting to tell truth. Let's infiltrate that by making them start to report X, Y, and Z so that we can create out that timeline. So we have to use discernment every step of the way. Now, I've gotten this message quite a bit starting years ago, and I recently heard Elizabeth April finally speak to it as well. So we must use our own intu intuition and discernment. What does our own truth meter tell us about what's new and what's news? And in the end, the point is, how do you want to live? What do you want life to feel like? You know, a suggestion might be to spend the five minutes you use to scan headlines daily and apply it to this visualization. How do I want my day? How, how do I want my day to feel? Okay. Let's take a breath. Ah. Okay. So empowerment number three for being immune to the negative energy sweeping the earth. Use conscious understanding of what's going on to move into authentic, organic forgiveness. So here's the line of thinking around this. Negative forces, these visitors are invading, infecting everyone, friend and foe. Uh, Karen, perhaps you could do a mute. I think I'm hearing noise. Uh, so let me say that again. Negative forces are invading and infecting or winding into your wounds and the wounds of everyone else who you in encourage or, or seem to uh, have be your friend or your foe. So knowing that everyone is being played, you the people close to you that you love, the people you consider enemies and the worst you know, ones of all are all being played. This understanding when you really feel it in your body can lead to a new level of compassion like you've never felt before. That bad leader, that rebel gorilla, that criminal, that police officer, that crap head ex-husband, that abandoning or abusive father or mother, they have all been played, as have we. When we understand that, that there really is no enemy, this leads us to that compassion for them. And this allows us to start releasing the judgment and this can lead us right to the palace of forgiveness. And this palace is located outside the matrix. And forgiveness leads to better decision-making around how to interact with that other evildoer sleeping in our bed. Okay, and this is what I received in Mama Cacao Ceremony with the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy at Seven Sisters Mystery School just last week, and it took my breath away in a good way. It led me to being able to finally, at long last, in an authentic bodily way, forgive the adult perpetrators in my life. Okay, these parental figures. And I couldn't believe it, but this has trickled down to forgiving everyone with whom I get pissed off almost immediately. This, this teaching, this understanding, this integration has stayed with me. So it's important that we not give into the illusion that there are bad people. There are just people who are being played. Hmm. And check this out, even the negative visitors themselves are in a loop of disconnection from Divine Mother. And that my friends, will be another layer of forgiveness that we will all be doing over time as high-level spirit workers, as things ratchet up, disclosure ratchets up, the exposure of these beings, et so, and so forth. We'll be really called to bring in forgiveness at a galactic level. 
Dawn. Mm, thank you, Marguerite. Thank you for sharing your story of your experience of forgiveness. And um, the words come to, to mind and to heart, the holy grace of forgiveness. Now, many of you who know me, you know I'm a Course in Miracles student of many years, and the foundational principle is forgiveness. So I'm just going to add a couple of points here for anyone who's unfamiliar with, with this um, understanding of the healing and the power that comes from this. We are all children, divine children of the one creator. And we're here having this dream of separation from love, God, love, divine mother, love. And it is only our will, which is manipulated and used unconsciously, which miscreates and leaves us feeling and having experiences here that require forgiveness, experiences of victimization. So I want to clarify that forgiveness is not a permission slip for bad behavior. It is most possible and congruent to forgive with boundaries. So if we've experienced harm from another in this, what, what we call in A Course in Miracles, a dream world, we don't go up to them and say, hey, I forgive you. It's all good. That's not really aligned. There's a deeper level, which Marguerite spoke into here, this grace that comes to us when we realize we have all suffered. And those who are the deepest, worst, nastiest perps are the ones suffer suffering most deeply because they're disconnected with the divine, which is love. So forgiveness is not a permission slip. It's a recognition that to hold resentments, judgments, and the will to attack is like taking poison and hoping the other person dies. Of course, you know, that's the many of you may have heard that. That's not my original quote, uh, but it's so precise to the truth of it. So forgiveness is the recognition that at the ultimate level, there really is only one of us here. Or another way to say it is, we are all children of the one loving creator. That which I do the, to the least of my sisters and brothers, I do to myself. So forgiveness is when we realize we are walking through our own movie. And if we want to change the movie, we don't go up to the projector screen and punch the bad guy in the nose. I, we go to the projector itself. We go inside and we find what needs to be released so that we can forgive, let it go, and it's no longer a baggage we drag around. Okay, so let's take a breath. <laughs> yeah. So just letting yourself receive that, knowing that your subconscious mind can 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 receive whatever the conscious mind can't necessarily grasp right now. As we move into empowerment number four for being immune to the negative energy sweeping the earth. Clear and upgrade your energy body. Now this right now, at this point, as we are in this um, eclipse window and we are moving toward the end of 2023 into an even more activating year of 2024, this, my dear sisters and brothers, is the most important thing right now, in my humble opinion. Yeah. So Marguerite, if you want to begin. Yeah, clearing and upgrading your energy body. This is basically what we might call a psychic process, all right? And it's important that we realize that, you know, psychic tooling and tune-up should be as much a part of our education as anything. And it's fallen more and more by the wayside, you know. Psychic skill training has just been become like a total frill for most people, but Dawn and I received in medicine ceremony back in July, the very strong message that every spiritual person needs an energetic clearing and psychic attunement now to integrate the extraordinary new and intense energies that have been radiating to and within the earth plane that Dawn talked about earlier and to all humans. Okay. So again, this is a psychic upgrade, and there are many ways to do this clearing and psychic attunement. And I want to take a, a moment, Dawn, and I want to take a moment here to talk about one way that we're offering this 
clean sweep transmission for you, which is called, some of you might have been seeing us talk about this, the Soul Relief and Renewal Weekend, because this is going to address these issues that people are experiencing that, that we've been talking about and lift you up. So this weekend, it's going to be November 3rd through 5th this year, 2023. It's really going to be an inspired transmission. Dawn and I have been, you know, working our butts off <laughs> for many years, as have many of you. But we, we have been shown that we are transmitters. You know, we are ambassadors um, of this authorized to, to give these transmissions to people. And some of the masters that we're in humble communication with are particularly Mother Mary, Yeshua, and Magdalene. Now, that's not in, you know, the promo for this, <laughs> this weekend, but that's what's underpinning this. And, and in this weekend, you're going to relieve these pressures from the heavy changes within and around you. This is not a training weekend. This is not a work yourself weekend. This is not a, oh my God, I have to like go home and apply everything. This is you're going to receive some experiences and transmissions and get it to the next level. You're going to be able to tune into the psychic power that this reset period over the past three years is offering you. You probably have noticed why is it harder for you to be with people around people, be live? You know, you're picking up on far more psychic information since the quarantine time. That was the light side of that shadow experience. And so this weekend is going to help you with that. It's going to help you fortify your spirit for the coming times that Dawn talked about. Probably is not going to get easier anytime soon. So we need to move from feeling it's all too much to being invigorating, invigorated for this coming era of change, because we really are going to need this. So it's going to be live online, November 3rd through 5th live. You can also watch it in replay. There's a bonus call on Wednesday, November 8th for integration and really some group connectivity. It's going to offer you a release valve and also these very powerful energetic tools and processes to elevate your spirit and deepen your soul's growth. Again, all you need to do is come, turn on the Zoom and receive. Dawn? Yes, thank you. So I wanted to share with you that the a little bit about the journey. So there's a there's a kind of a journey, a a, a logical process to how this goes. So uh, the process goes like this: the the first step is to clear and further heal any old wounds, so you become available for more abundant opportunities. And more of that energy, more of that light energy, which when we're more attuned to it, brings more of the abundance of the things that we want. And so the clearing is first, then there's the amplification of the light body. So you can deepen into your spiritual journey with more well-being and vitality. And this includes receiving empowerment from Divine Mother, from the guides that will be with us to support your soul's unique purpose for being here right now, because you came here to be here during this great ascension, to serve in some capacity. And that doesn't have to look like some kind of public thing, but a alignment with your highest soul energies is essential. So you want to be able to move forward with that clarity and strength, and also to open your intuitive sight to more expansive levels, not just so you can see what's really going on, but really so that you can navigate the energies like, whew, see, clarity, boom, go. So it's it's a progression of experience we're going to take you through. And um, so I, I want to tell you a little bit more about, uh, now we're going to dial that in a, a smidge more. So on Friday, our Friday evening together is when we go into the overview, the big, the big overview, why you, why now, why are we here? So we're going to have a, a look at the timeline of the planetary shifting, bringing our years of experiences as oracle priestesses and guides. We're going to deliver you up to the minute information and guidance so that you can really get the clarity. Okay, here's where we are. Here's where I'm going. Here I am in my life. This is the bigger picture. So this is a healing session as well, because not only is it offering you support, including Oracle shares from Marguerite and my own astrological insights, um, but we're also bringing forward a process. It's an energetic process to help you gain 
greater clarity on your current flow, your current energy flow, and where and how you most wish to shift for your highest path. So this Friday evening, our opening session is going to let you walk away from this gathering feeling more at ease because that's the way we relax into receptivity, right? And we're able to maintain that peace of mind regardless of what's going on around you. So it's really that tune up, that alignment, that big picture to prepare us for Saturday. So that's Marguerite. Right. That's right. And that knowing how to navigate regardless of what's going on around is going to be more and more important as all these messages and pictures start popping up about, oh, the environment, the sky is falling, et cetera. Okay. It's going to just seem way worse than it actually is. So we've got to be ready. And I just want to say that um, we're going to uh, finish up talking about this, this third, um, fourth empowerment. We're going to go to the fifth empowerment. We have a special bonus for you at the end. And um, so we want you to stay on here. Okay. Just hang in there with us. So the Saturday, what you're going, what we're going to be doing together is clearing your vessel for soul deep, soul level renewal. You're going to be receiving healing and renewal in a blissful and effortless way. And so you can expect to be cleared of old stuck energies. Dawn and I have processes to offer you old stuck energies, old stuck emotions, and then have any energetic, and this is, this is the psychic training part of it, energetic holes or leaks in your energy system smoothly sealed because we're, a lot of us are leaking out right now. We don't even know it. So we're going to seal that up and then be deeply replenished, have the container filled with this new high frequency light code, the coding that's available for your spiritual advancement. And Dawn and I are going to be preparing ceremonially in advance to deliver you both in the moment guidance and some of these uh, tools and processes that we've developed for your renewal and recalibration. And so again, as you receive these energy transmissions of light, you will find the relief you're seeking at this time, the strengthening. And again, this is going to be blissful for you. You know how it is when you get in a group, the leaders do the work and you're just there. Ah, all right. That's what it's going to be, Dawn. Yeah. So after that, the next phase, after you've received all the clearings and activations of higher light frequencies, it's really time to dial up your energy so you can step back into your life renewed. That's why our focus on Sunday is to activate these new light codes within you and further open your intuitive and psychic capacities and energize your future goals, including prosperity, greater relaxation, greater connection, and clarity about what your next steps are. So this is really the upgrade, the up-leveling, the activation needed for effectively riding and integrating and being empowered by these potent light energies, these frequencies pouring onto our earth now. And so by the time we wrap up on Sunday, you can expect to feel excitement, optimism, connection, and energetically renewed in the driver's seat of your life again. Margaret. Yeah, you know, this is this is not something we expected to be teaching. Like we we received these directives in ceremony, in Lady Cannabis ceremony. We were like, oh, well, we know we want to do something. Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? Blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, boom, you people are doing this. Okay, wow. Um, so we're following this directive. You know, we're hoping that it's resonating for you um, and that it's coming forth what, what this is going to be. We also, as a part of this course, we have bonuses, generous bonuses that are integral to your experience. And they offer some takeaways for continued upgrading beyond the weekend. One is the integration call we're doing on November 8th for deep sharing among us, really a Q&A, a sharing time. How's this been landing for you? Another major bonus of the weekend is my signature course, Protection for Spirit Workers. And awakening souls. It's already available online. You get it immediately when you register. This is a very, very powerful course. We just revisited it 
It gives you a clearer picture of all the challenging forces spirit servers deal with from human and interdimensional realms, especially as we move deeper. So in there, you're going to learn a variety of techniques for becoming further immune to negativity, establishing your sovereignty, developing your own higher consciousness, and receiving tools for both honoring the shadow and witnessing it neutrally and having some boundaries toward it so that you won't be taken over. So um, that is part of it. And Dawn? Yeah, so I wanted to... I reflected on what is the right complement to add to all of this. And what I felt was essential is that we all have something that we can turn to beyond the weekend at any point in time, before the weekend, during the weekend, after the weekend, um, that supports our own self-care. So I've created a self-care guide and a beautiful healing chamber of the heart meditation, which is something I've done silently in my own heart and mind for a long time and actually finally put it to a recording. So the intention of this and, and the effect of this is to soothe your nervous system when in this year to come, as things ratchet up, soothing that nervous system in a quick and easy way and allowing you to clear your energy body anytime you need it. So both of these, I, I, again, I specifically designed them to support you before, during, and after our weekend. Blessed be. Okay, so the link for registration for this is being put in the chat box now. My beautiful new administrative manager, Karen Gordon, is here to do that. Karen, if you wanted to unmute and um, unveil and say hello for a minute, you certainly could. Um, Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, blessed be. Hi, Karen. She's just been such a beautiful support for Seven Sisters Mystery School and for me personally. She's putting that in the in the chat box now with the link that you can grab. And we do encourage you to register today because anybody who registers by midnight Eastern tonight, that includes anybody who already has registered, will receive a bonus that we will talk about at the end. Now, I want to let you know you can please now start putting in chat any questions you have about our Soul Relief and Renewal Weekend, questions about what we've been talking about here today, and pertinent comments, because in a few minutes, we're going to uh, have uh, Karen tell us what some of your pertinent questions are, and we're going to answer those. So I know you've been chatting, chatting, chatting as we've been going along. She's been monitoring. If you have any new questions about this weekend, about what we're talking about here today, your own brilliant comments, we welcome those. All right, so Dawn. Yeah, so let's move on to our fifth empowerment, which is recognizing and healing your emotional patterns. So Marguerite will start us off about this one. Yeah, this is related to everything we've been saying, but it's a little more mm, nudging, <laughs> okay? Because we just have to be honest with ourselves. We really have to look in the mirror and realize that we cannot spiritually bypass now. Or number one, we're going to get hooked and we're going to get played, like I've been saying. And number two, we're going to get our butts kicked. Because we really can't let go of this anymore. If you have been holding off and in dealing with emotional patterns, it's going to be in your face now. It probably has been in your face. You're seeing what's in the face of other people around you. And you can clearly see it when it's them. You're like, oh, yeah, well, they didn't do that work. Blah, dee, dah, dee, dah. Well, now <laughs> we're all being shown the mirror. We're all being given the kick in the butt, you know, et cetera. And so here's my pattern, right? Here's one of them. Pushing, 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 rushing, 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 not breathing, like I was saying before, and thinking it's a virtue, like, oh, I'm just working. You know, I can get away with this. All right. I told you that I had to deal with that because my womb has been talking to me and I don't want to have any long-term problems. Wherever, you've, wherever you have your vulnerabilities, it'll be showing up there. Could be your emotional body, could be your physical body, right? Here's another one I've had. A pattern or a wound. It's not just a pattern, but a wound. 
feeling like an outsider in others' families, right? I had this the other day where I, for a prolonged period of time, I was in somebody else's family and they were all going about their family stuff, stuff, stuff. I could have been there. I could have not been there. And I just felt like an outsider. Well, what did this activate? This activated being in a step family without my own mother, where I was not being embraced, loved, cherished. And not only that, but I was being abused. Okay. So lying awake at night, that one night during this experience, I was like, oh my God, this wound and pattern is upfront and close and personal for me. I've got to do a new level of inner child healing work. Okay. So that's just an example of the kinds of things that is that that are showing up for all of us. Dawn. Yeah, so I'm going to share um, one of my patterns that's come up that I had and how I kind of shifted it and how I did shift it. So one of my old patterns is scarcity. Um, the scarcity fear that blocked me from actually receiving. So uh, the pattern is that I go into, as Marguerite, as you talked about, pushing or rushing or doing. It's like, okay, feeling fear, feeling scarcity, limitation, do, do something, act, act, go, go, make, make stuff happen. And um, I, years ago, uh, about uh, 2013, I, I almost bled to death. I was perimenopausal and and I had six months where I was bleeding so badly that I actually had a psychic reader tell me I ought to talk with my husband about it if I was planning on exiting um, because I was just driving and driving and driving. So um, I wasn't following higher guidance. And so that came up for me again recently with all these energies. And it feels counterintuitive, but I knew what I needed to do. I actually needed to stop. And I also needed to invest in getting some support, getting some energy clearing work, some insight guidance. That, that was actually what I needed to do. So it was counterintuitive because scarcity, limitation, contraction, action, don't do it. No, the whole thing was let go, be in the vertical axis. What's the guidance? Oh yeah, you actually have to open and invest and receive support right now. So that's how this, one of the ways that this has played out for me, one of the layers that I've cleared in the last segment of time, the last six months. Must it be? Yeah. You know, this crappy time is really, as we're saying, your initiation into greater levels of healing so that you can be less and less at the effect of these negative energies, less emotionally vulnerable, and again, more available to the abundance that is the reality of the earth plane. So Dawn talked about some of her methods. You know, what are some of the other tools for recognizing and healing your emotional wounds and patterns? The breathing stillness peace process that I mentioned earlier, the meditation to identify feelings and work your higher self to transmute emotions. Prayer with your guides and masters, asking directly for assistance and grace, a quantum leap of healing, that this doesn't have to be a long, prolonged thing, okay? Good old inner child and inner parts therapy, one-on-one -on -one healing sessions and mentoring to release negative hooks and restore the light body. Dawn and I both offer that, for example. Working with Mama Cacao and other plant allies with wisdom and the intention to heal when you go in, in these ceremonies. And again, weekends and events like the Soul Relief and Renewal Weekend, where you can be led in journeys to understand what's happening for you and receive transmissions of healing so that your, your healing can be quantum. It doesn't have to be drawn out. All right. Let's take a breath. We're going to continue on here for a bit more time because we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you via chat, as mentioned before. So Karen, what questions are we having regarding either our weekend, number one, um, what we've been talking about, number two, and any pertinent shares, number three? Sure. So um, Colette over on Facebook 
is asking, what if you can't attend the weekend live? Great question. Yeah, we, everything is recorded. So if you, when you register, you have access to all of the uh, bonus materials we've shared with you. And then as these, uh, as we complete each call, they will be placed in that same area for your access. Uh, we encourage you to take it in the order we are delivering it because it is, again, a progression, as I explained earlier, but you have access for life. So it's, it's, um, you can do this the following weekend, the following week, you can do it a few hours later than we're delivering it, depending on your schedule. Yeah, must it be. Karen? Yes, well, that's very good to know. Thank you, Dawn. Um, Osho here in the Zoom room is asking, dear Dawn and Marguerite, how do we reconcile forgiveness with sacred feminine rage? Mm -hmm. You know, Marguerite is the master of sacred feminine rage. She knows this one inside and out. You've come to the right person to ask this question. Dawn is a warrior too. So I'll start, Dawn, just channeling yeah. the top of my head and then you can go. Reconciling forgiveness with sacred feminine rage. What I'm getting is feel the rage and forgive anyway. <laughs> All right. That is the title of her new book. Feel the rage and forgive anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it doesn't mean that you don't go through the processes of inner child. I love you. I honor this freaking rage. This stuff has sucked. I hate it. But then going through all these processes of empowerment and transmutation so that you can get to the place, you can't spiritually bypass and go from rage to forgiveness. You got to go through all the steps we're talking about, all the steps you've already done, probably in many of your other uh, healings and so forth, all the steps of our weekend and so forth. Okay. That would be my little quick answer to that because it's all valid and you cannot just leap over emotions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Osho, for this question. It's a really important one. We are divine eternal beings having a human experience, and we must honor that human experience. We are here, and we have come through incarnations of trauma, samskaras, uh, soul loss, soul fragmentation, that we have come to this incarnation to heal. The, the sacred feminine rage is the aspect of our beings that, that is up to here. We're up to here to use my Italian East Coast energies as well. And so feeling the feels is essential. In fact, if we do not feel the feels, we do not feel safe for the soul to embody such that we can actually hold the holy grace of forgiveness. We will continue to float up here in the ethers and spiritual bypass. So it's the process. It's the journey. Yeah. I hope that's helpful for you, sister or brother. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Blessed be. Karen, what's next? Um, yes. Let me bring up my chat here again. So um, in the beginning of the presentation, when both you, Don and Marguerite, were talking about the negative energies, or as you, Don, refer to them as parasites, there are a lot of comments that came into the chat that were in resonance with the ideas you were sharing. So I'll just share a few of those. And then there is a question related to that. Great. So I don't have the names of people, but people were saying they were feeling the exhaustion, depressing, depression returning, grief and anxiety. One person wrote in and said super high and then super exhaustion persistent heavy energies and inexplicable sadness extremely negative and caused me a person said to feel really exhausted and desperate nervousness nausea and one person wrote in saying feeling unable to give readings for my clients right now so the question that came in about that was from Eva and, and she said she missed what Marguerite said um in relation to the, all of the negativity, you had given some guidance, Marguerite. She wanted to know, what was it you said? Was it to practice, to be open, breathe, relax? So if you could go over that again. Yes, first of all, just to say, 
Yeah, that's that's what a lot of people are experiencing right now. I've had it. I'm a spiritual teacher. Dawn's had it. She's a spiritual teacher. It's like, what the heck? Waking up going, did I ever do any work at all? Why am I feeling like completely panicked in the middle of the night? That's why we're doing this weekend, you know, because like <laughs> this is all about us, all around us. Um, so the practice there was to notice when you're out of sorts in any way, shape, or form. Start breathing. Start getting still. Take some time with that. As you do that, your body starts relaxing. And as you do that, a greater peace comes upon you and within you. And as you do that, you open the doorway to more love for yourself and others. That's the trajectory that came through in one of our medicine sessions in the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy. Dawn, did you want to add anything to any of that? Oh, I think that covers it. I mean, I know we all have also our own tools. Like for me, sometimes when it's very intense, I'll use the EFT technique of tapping on the collarbone and breathing just because the central nervous system, again, we are divine, eternal, spiritual beings having a human experience. And that means we have a central nervous system that will go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. How can we care for that? The breathing, the tapping, the soothing, putting our feet on the earth. I'm Every day I put my feet on the earth uh, or hug a tree. So applying our tools, but it is that, it's the, the sacred pause. It's the, wow, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna breathe right now. And I'm going to care for myself as my highest priority. Less it be. So Karen, unless there are any other pertinent questions related to um, the, the Soul Relief and Renewal Weekend. There um, is just one. Linda's asking, will this weekend and the content that you've described, will it help those of us with old soul fatigue? <laughs> on let's have you take that one <laughs> okay let me just i'm going to connect in with this just i'm feeling the energies of the weekend because we know in a sense all time and space are now so old soul fatigue i i would say first of all sister i am a very old soul of this earth and i have had some old soul fatigue so i know that my guides, one of the energetics, yes, they're here bringing in is exactly the medicine for us to release this. We are no longer obligated to hold on to the old contracts and energies that say we must be weary in order to be worthy. This is coming through. We, we do not need to be weary in order to be worthy. So there is a way in which on Early on Saturday, we are going to be releasing, literally, I'm seeing like a, a jettisoning of energy, a, a, an opening that lets us release. That weariness is not a service to any of us. And so this container is precisely to liberate us from those energies, those sticky energies, whatever they happen to be. For some of us, it's the weariness that we may rise in the strength of who we truly are beyond those old programs, energetics, patterns, and tendencies. Yes. So I hope that that's, I hope that answers your question. That's beautiful. And I would add, and, you know, make a note of this, somebody, Karen, write it down. Um, you're going to be releasing contracts, old mm -hmm. contracts that say, I must do this healing for the entire my entire tribe for the entire world because no one else is holding it i'm the only one left standing to hold it those are old contracts those are you know atlantean and cataclysmic memories contracts we made when things went down we're releasing that so we can get into present time present timeline refill our well we're all in this together you no longer need to be the only one carrying this, dear one. And this that goes for all of us on this call who have felt that in one way or another. And that's one of the things we're clearing, okay, on this weekend. So yes, blessed be and thank you. Yeah. I'd like to just conclude now, Dawn. Yeah. Uh, 
we we just want to uh, reiterate here that we are so grateful for you to have been here with us. We want to see you again on November 3rd, that weekend, so that you can receive your energetic uplift on all levels of your being and feel that relief from the weariness of living through these times and get your greater capacity to access higher guidance for your unique journey. Dawn, do you have anything to add here? Well, I want I want to invite you to share with them the bonus if they choose to join us today. And also if um, Gloria and Sylvia, I think they had a recommendation as well. Yeah, we have a sixth empowerment for everybody. But first here, you know, for anybody who registers or has already registered or registers by 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 midnight Eastern tonight, Friday, October 20th, you will receive a fabulous gift. Um, the 12 powerful meditations with Mother Mary package. Okay. This is nearly seven hours of healing journeys and visualizations, basically oracled by me, taken from last year's monthly Mary and Magdalene empowerment circles. They are profound. I have been re listening, using them myself. And that is, I think, $160 value, something like that. So those are things, there's no work involved. You can just pop one on whenever. It can help with any of these things that we've been talking about. And um, we also want to have Dawn, you, you all join Dawn and me again next Friday, October 27th. We will be live in medicine ceremony, even higher octane on my Bridging Dimensions show on YouTube. Karen is going to provide the link for that in the chat so that you can go click there and be notified. Just click the notify me bell. We are going to be delivering Oracle messages, uh, answers to humanity in crisis. Okay. We're going to each be in our chosen medicine. We're going to be together like here, but it's going to be woo. And you get to bring your questions that you want to take to the Oracle. All right, so please come join us Friday, October 27th, starting at 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. And check your time zone in the UK because I think your, your times might have changed and just check it against Eastern and Pacific, all right? Finally, for all of you who have been waiting with bated breath for this bonus empowerment for being immune, to the negative energy sweeping the earth, watch funny cat videos and laugh you took us off. Because humor is the greatest God and uh, it shifts the energy for everything, all right? You could, just, you could just have fast forwarded to the end of this video, had it all in that and be done with it, all right? Just, and then go on with your life. Watch funny cat videos. Okay. Thank you, Gloria and Sylvia. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Dawn, and all of you for being with us either on Zoom or on Facebook. We look forward to seeing you November 3rd. Dawn, any final words here? I want to thank you and I want to thank everyone who is here. And I want to also, again, just invite you to join us for the weekend and really, this is an opportunity for those who already are, are registered. And for those of you today, this is the day to sign up to get that extra bonus. So if you're feeling it, you, you're, you've got a sense of our energies, you'll get even more of that when we're in Oracle state, which is how we will serve you during that weekend. So really with our guides, with the guides, we are here to serve you and to support you because we need your lights right now. We all need to hold this and be able to stand strong in the this time of opportunity, blessing, and challenge. So thank you again for being here. I look forward to connecting with you at a deeper level soon. All right. Blessed be. Bye for now, everybody. Mwah.